here with Eric Reed, trainer of Kentucky Derby winner Rich Strike. Eric, you're set to go in the Travers this coming Saturday. Talk to me about the process of why you guys chose the Travers. I know this was decision was made quite some time ago um, to skip the Preakness, go to Belmont, and then Travers. What was the whole idea behind this? We wanted to space the races out quite a bit, and we need our races to be a mile and a quarter minimum at this point. So. Um, there was no way really to skip the Belmont and, and take too much time to get to the Traverse. The Belmont was our next obvious choice and that gave us a long break, but um, this horse trained so hard it wasn't a problem for us worrying about the, the break. It actually did him a lot of good. So our goal was, uh, even, we didn't think we'd win the Derby naturally, but um, it was Derby, Belmont, Traverse, and then whatever happens after that, we'll let the horse decide. So I've heard you say this before, that you learned a lot from Belmont. Tell me about what you guys learned throughout the horse. Well, we learned that he does not like to be uh, the outside horse. He, uh, he'll he be fine if he's in the middle of the horses, he's fine on the inside. But when we pulled him out to the outside, he, he loses his aggression, loses his focus. He uh, he, he kind of fought Sonny most of the way, trying to get where he normally is in the race. And, you know, we'd never had him out there in any other race. And nine out of 10 horses want to be out there. And he just happens to be the one that doesn't. And so we learned that. and. Um, I think you know we learned to not set a, a direct plan on how to ride this horse. Let him do it his way, and you know the rest will take care of itself. That's the only race all year that he wasn't finishing full of run. In terms of preparing for this race, you sent the horse from Mercury to Churchill up to here. What was the idea behind having those two works at Churchill Downs besides coming straight here? I could open him up a lot more at, at Churchill, plus I, I could kind of get him in race mode mentally because when he gets there, he gets super aggressive. So we gave him the first work and he worked tremendous, uh, galloped out strong, came back like he'd done nothing. And then the next work, I took another horse and I spotted him two or three lengths and let him sit behind a horse and run by him in the turn just to make him get competitive and put a little bit more in the work. And that was a six furlong work and he, I mean, he. He passed that with flying colors and came back like he hadn't done anything again. So we knew we had, had him good and fit. In his mind, he was so much more relaxed about everything up there this time instead of showing off, rearing up, doing the stuff that he would do after the derby. So I think uh, the time off settled him down. And I, I, I think the horse is like me. I think he, he's, he needs to redeem himself, and he's, he's ready to do that. In terms of coming up here, last question for you. You know, you did come up here, you did the two works. How's the horse adjusting to the track? How's it liking the atmosphere up here? A little bit cooler in the mornings up here than necessarily in Kentucky. You know, how's everything acclimating? I think all the cool weather helped him a whole lot. And the track kind of started changing a little bit after we got here. I know it was pretty tiring and, and all the talk I was getting was it was a very taxing track on the horses. So, but I've watched him and it's kind of changed leading up to the Alabama and he's he's trained phenomenal over it. It's, uh, Reminds me a lot of the Churchill track in a way, and the way he skips across it is much easier than he did at Belmont. And you know he trained good at Belmont, but everything he did there he had to work harder at it than he normally does, which was fine to me because he was still doing it. But up here he's back to just skipping across and doing it effortlessly. Eric Reed, trainer of Rich Strike, Kentucky Derby winning Rich Strike, going this coming Saturday in the Traverse. Thank you. Here back at Dale Roman's barn where Ain't Life Grand is hanging out for the uh, ready, preparing for his Travers debut here. Uh, Kelly Von Hamel here. Tell me a little bit about what the decision was to decide to come to this Travers. Well, I think a lot of it is uh, he's ascending. We think he's a pretty nice colt and we want to come back here, run a mile a quarter and give him a shot and see what uh, see what we can do with really nice horses. Uh, horses, a, a couple black stakes underneath. Uh, you saw that, that Iowa Derby, which is impressive. Talk to me about the Iowa Derby and that setup that that race gives it your opportunity to run here. I think like like on the Iowa Derby, there's an honest pace there. And, and uh, you know, we this is a horse, like I said, he can run that far. He was finishing well. And a mile a quarter, I think, you know, it's going to be an honest race again. And, and uh, if we can run that far, which we can, against these kind, we'll just see if we can finish like we did in the Derby. Talking about this horse coming up, we were just speaking, the horse came up quite a while ago. What was the decision to bring up the horse, you know, a little bit earlier than usual? I think a lot of us talking with Dell said it's beneficial if you train over the track, work a time or two over the track. Plus, the trip getting here from Iowa was a long way, so we want to make sure he had plenty of time to recover from the long trip and just, you know, just settle in and just get acclimated and take, you know, if we're going to come, we want to give him every opportunity to succeed. So he's been acclimated now for a little while, a couple works. Tell me about how you've been thinking it's been working over the surface. Been traveling very well, at, uh, especially the other day, you know, he worked really, really good. So 
the surface has been no problem. He's worked great over it. We think he's handling everything, so that would be no problem. And then I saw you at the draw last night. This field has come back quite quite difficult. You have some shoot, new shooters in the field, some Kentucky Derby trail horses, the Kentucky Derby winner. How'd you feel this in general? This field came back in your post draw. Oh, I you know we knew when we come back here is going to be a tough race. All the best three year olds are here, and so we knew the competition would be outstanding in the post position. We had a good draw. Uh, going that far, I don't think is a huge deal. Uh, but as far as him, he, he really not one horse. It has to be here or there. So the post position will be just fine. Last thing for you. You've had a little bit of experience in Saratoga in the past. Can you tell me about you know your past runners here and, and how that translates to this horse? Well, it's been kind of fun getting back here. We had Miss Macy Sue back here in 07 and 08 running in the Philly Mare. I think Honorable Miss. So it's been a while since we've been here and uh, it's a very special place so just to get a chance to come back here and compete again it's it's we're just having a lot of fun well you have a little bit of a long shot coming into this this saturday's traver best of luck thank you it's rudy rodriguez and bella sofia going in the grade one ballerina this coming sunday rudy talk to me about how the horse has been training after the last race uh wasn't exactly the pace setup you were looking for and didn't exactly run the the classic bella race we've seen before uh what are you feeling for this ballerina uh, you know, she's turning probably good. I'm not too sure. Maybe she don't want it to take it back. Maybe she wants to just go. And I think that's going to be the plan. Put him in the race and go for it. We saw Bella run uh, a very nice workout the other day. I think it was August 20th. Mm -hmm. And we weren't seeing that type of workouts coming into the last race as strong. Much stronger. Is this the old Bella we're seeing again? You know, the track is playing um, a lot of faster in the morning than it is in the afternoon. I no got no clue why is the reason, but since like in the morning, the horse is working pretty fast. Um, and then in the afternoon, everything changed. The track is very dull in the afternoon. Um, I'm not sure. In terms of jockeys, have you figured out who is going to be up on Bella this week? Um, Luis Ayes is going to ride her. And then the plan will still be to go to the front and try to keep yes. going. Try to hopefully she can break good and put him in the race. I know this meet hasn't been your, your standard Saratoga meet for you, but it seems like Bella could be a shining star here with a grade one. Have you looked at the other entries, uh, po nominations, possible entries for the race? Anybody that you were looking forward to racing against? You know, I really don't look at the entries. Um, I know if it's she's the way she's training, the great ones, everybody can win. You know, as long as my horse is happy and healthy, that's all I can do. I can all control the outcome. Everybody's out to win and we're here to win. And sometimes it don't work, but we gotta keep trying. Well, good luck on this Sunday. Bella Sophia in the grade one ballerina this coming Sunday. Thanks, Rudy. Thank you so much.